Hey yo! Today's topic is the chemistry exam. Now I must say that I think that the chemistry exam was the most unpredictable during the year that I took the exam. That's because during the exam I was so scared because I knew that there was that particular top topic that I couldn't master during my revision, during my review. However, it was ironic that actually the interviewers were most impressed by my chemistry scores compared to the other to my other scores in the other exams and the reason for that is during the exam there were really not that many questions about that particular topic that I was really scared about and so I say this to caution you that although we will be talking about topics here in this video there is really no guarantee that these will be the highlights or at least that any of these topics would would be highlighted in the exam that said let's look at what i think will be the topics that will be covered in the exam here you see the usual topics in high school chemistry and we're going to go through some of the subtopics here but let me just let me just read them periodic table the bonding gas laws chemical reactions stoichiometry chemical equilibrium kinetics and organic chemistry and most of these topics would be standard so i think it would be helpful if we at least understand many of the founding concepts foundational concepts in each of the topics first off is the periodic table of elements when I was in high school, I was confident reading the periodic table. If there was a question that involved the periodic table, I could confidently give an answer. If I was given a periodic table. The problem with the MEXT exams is that they do not give you a periodic table. And yet, they have questions that involve the use of periodic tables. Or rather, of the periodic table. For example, questions like, which of the following elements has an electronic configuration closest to that of neon? Or questions like, how would you write the electron configuration of chlorine using the neon electron configuration or the argon electron configuration? Without a periodic table, that's really, really hard to answer, especially if you don't remember anything about the the arrangement of the elements in the table but if you have a periodic table that's quite easy and straightforward and so what i suggest is actually trying to remember trying to find a way to memorize the first three periods because these are the most common commonly asked about elements periods one two and three groups 18 groups 17 group one and two and of course it will be hard to just memorize them and not actually know the trends anyway because what actually makes the periodic table useful is because they are arranged in a manner that allow us to predict things to predict the trends because th there's that inherent pattern in them so as important as memorizing the arrangement of the elements in the periodic table is actually understanding the trends in the periodic table so these trends are very important understanding how the electron configuration actually uh, progresses as you go through the periodic table it's very important when i took the exam i did not actually put much effort into memorizing the periodic table just because i wasn't used to it but I actually used the periodic table often enough in class that when the when the exam question was in front of me I could actually start imagining a periodic table and start filling the elements in my head so if you you've been using the periodic table quite often it might not be a very big problem for you but if you want more confidence answering the questions it might be good to actually have a way of imagining the periodic table in your head there are also questions about concepts 
and qualitative understanding of bonding, such as ionic bonding, covalent bonding, metallic bonds, polar versus nonpolar molecules, intermolecular bonding, such as van der Waal forces, and hydrogen London dispersion, dipole dipole bonds. So, these things, it might be good to review the concepts. Then it is very important to understand the gas laws, Boyle's, Galo Sachs, Charles Law, and ideal gas law. And they might actually give you computational questions about, about the gas laws. So not only is it important to understand what they say, it's also important to be able to use them in computational problems. Then there are also questions about reactions, chemical reactions in general. So the first part would be, or maybe the first part here, are about the types of reactions, the concepts involving them, common reactions such as hydrolysis, neutralization, the Haber process, electrolysis, and the difference between acids and bases, strong acids and weak acids. So understanding these, would be great help but uh, there is more about these that actually come out in the exam and that is the stoichiometry so what they will give you a chemical equation or they might ask you to balance chemical equations they might ask you about how much products are produced given the reactants which one is the limiting reactant how much was the yield they might ask you about the heat generated and the heat absorbed. So that's related to the enthalpy of reaction. And again, there are questions that actually ask you to write the numbers. So not multiple choice, but actually write the numbers, the actual um, results of the computation. And they will tell you things like to two significant figures, to one significant figure. So it is important to understand the rules of significant figures because your answer could be right computationally, but if you give it in the wrong number of significant figures, they might not give scores to that. They might not give you marks. There may also be questions about chemical equilibrium. So that includes Le Chatelier's principle, which is the, which is the most important concept that we would like to have when we actually deal about predicting whether the reaction would go left or go right, whether products will be produced or products will be consumed in a reaction, what are the effects of temperature of the concentration of the reactants, and how to compute equilibrium constants, and what is the effect of a reaction being endothermic versus exothermic. When it comes to chemical kinetics, we are more concerned about, we are most concerned about the rate of reaction. And to study this, people use something called the collision theory, where they treat the molecules and the atoms, the particles of the reactants and products to be balls that are colliding. And it says that the rate of reaction depends on how often collisions that are successful, or rather, how often are successful collisions. So many questions would be about what is the effect of the catalyst? What will happen if we raise the temperature? What happens if we, if we add more reactants? We increase the, the reactant concentration. What if we increase the surface area? So things like this. These things are the usual, the, the usual central topics in chemical kinetics. And there are other topics like activation energy, the Arrhenius equations, and the related topics. Uh, but for chemical kinetics in high school, most of them will revolve about the effects of these, of these factors here. The organic chemistry questions are for me the hardest questions in the chemistry exam. That's because I never actually got the opportunity to master organic chemistry in high school. And this is the topic that I was so scared about when I took my exam many years ago, but it turns out it turned out that 
they did not really go hard on organic chemistry during that year. And so I wrote here things that I do not really know about, but I see them in the paper. So I think they are actually important, but it might be hard for someone who, like me, did not have a good foundation on organic chemistry to just understand them right off the bat without actually trying to to understand the foundations. So I suggest you go pick up a chemistry book with organic chemistry, with a good introduction to organic chemistry, and maybe read about these terms here. Now, I did have a mastery of no nomenclature, but it did not really help me in the exams. Also, it was it was good to have a basic understanding of hydrocarbons, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and the basic functional groups. In the exam, they might ask you about reactions that produce the functional groups and all that, and the catalysts that actually are involved in the reactions. So for some of you, it might be easy to memorize the catalysts. For me, it was a little bit challenging. We did them in, in class in high school, but I never got the I, I never got to the level of actually memorizing the, the catalysts and and the reactions and their and the temperature at which they proceed. But if you're, but if you want a good a good score, good marks in chemistry, I think you should probably learn them by heart. Here I'm showing you the book that I used to review for my chemistry exam many years ago, and it's called Chemistry: The Central Science by Brown, Limay, and Burston. Is very helpful in explaining concepts, especially in the general inorganic chemistry. Very good explanations from me and very good exercises to, to help me strengthen my understanding of the concepts. However, it was a little thin on organic chemistry. There wasn't much material to go with. There wasn't much material to help you with the next exam. So if you're looking to, to learn about, about organic chemistry, I don't recommend this book for you. This concludes our survey of the possible topics that would come out in the chemistry exam for the undergraduate students of natural sciences. And it's been a long time since the last time I actually did chemistry in class. So I'm not sure if I can help you with all the questions, but if you do have questions about chemistry, just write them down and I'm, I'm going to try to answer them if I know how to answer them. And the exam itself could be challenging, but if you master the basics, you probably will have enough score to qualify anyway. So all the best. If you learned something new today, Please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!